Bacteria ribosomes are targets for antibiotics. These antibiotics are selective for the smaller bacterial ribosome and don't affect the human ribosome or its ability to synthesize proteins. Recall that the bacterial ribosome is 70S, comprised of 30S and 50S subunits, each of which is a target for antibiotics. Aminoglycosides and tetracyclines both inhibit the 30S ribosome. While inhibitors of 50S are chloramphenicol, clindamycin, erythromycin, and linezolid. Linezolid prevents the initiation step of protein synthesis, whereas most of the other antibiotics that inhibit protein synthesis inhibit elongation. The aminoglycosides include gentamicin, neomycin, amicacin, tobramycin, and streptomycin. They are all bactericidal by inhibiting the formation of the initiation complex and causing misreading of mRNA. Because they require oxygen for uptake, they are ineffective against anaerobes, but are effective against gram-negative rots. They are notable for their nephrotoxicity, autotoxicity, and teratogenic potential. Streptomycin was the first drug effective in treating tuberculosis, but due to toxicity and inconvenient route of administration, it is now mostly only used for multiple drug-resistant strains. The tetracyclines are all bacteriostatic tetracyclines that bind to the 30S subunit of the bacterial ribosomes and prevent the attachment of aminoacyl tRNA. Because of their ability to accumulate in cells, these drugs are particularly effective against intracellular pathogens such as rickettsia and chlamydia. Tetracyclines are contraindicated in pregnancy. The classic side effects are teeth discoloration in children and photosensitivity. Demiclocycline also acts as an ADH antagonist and is particularly useful to counter the effects of SIADH. The macrolids are erythromycin, azithromycin, and clarithromycin, which inhibit protein by blocking translocation. These bacteriostatic antibiotics bind to the 50S ribosomal subunit. Used to treat atypical pneumonias, upper respiratory infections, sexually transmitted infections, streptococcal infections, and Neisseria. An interesting fact about macrolids is that they accumulate within leukocytes, which then conveniently transport them to the site of infection. Chloramphenicol is a bacteriostatic drug that inhibits 50S peptidyl transferase activity. It is classically used to treat meningitis, but has limited utility when other options are available due to numerous toxicities. It cannot be metabolized by infants lacking liver UDP glucuronal transferase, resulting in gray baby syndrome. It is also associated with anemia and aplastic anemia, both of which are dose-dependent. Clindamycin is bacteriostatic by blocking peptide bond formation at the 50S ribosomal subunit. It is effective against anaerobic infections, such as Bacteroides fragilis and Clostridium perfringens. One of the most important implications of clindamycin use in the clinical setting is the increased incidence of pseudomembranous colitis as a result of C. difficile overgrowth. The sulfonamides inhibit dihydropterate synthetase by use of its PABA antimetabolites, which are bacteriostatic. They are clinically used for gram-positive, gram-negative organisms, as well as nocardia and chlamydia. SMX is used for a simple UTI, and sulfadiazine is used in topical application against burns. It may induce hypersensitivity reactions, hemolysis in G6PD deficient patients, nephrotoxicity, and carnicterus in infants. Bacterial resistance is a result of an altered enzyme, decreased uptake, or increased PABA synthesis. Trimethoprim is bacteriostatic. It acts by inhibiting bacterial dihydrofolate reductase. Without dihydrofolate reductase, bacteria are unable to synthesize nucleotides for DNA and RNA synthesis, so this indirectly inhibits transcription and cell division. It is frequently used in combination with the sulfonamides. Trimethoprim is clinically indicated for recurrent or complicated UTI and pneumocystis durovecchi pneumonia. Trimethoprim also affects human dihydrofolate reductase to a lesser extent than bacterial, so you may need to administer folinic acid or leucovorin to alleviate side effects of megaloblastic anemia, leukopenia, and granulocytopenia. Hence, the mnemonic TMP treats marrow poorly. For the same reason, trimethoprim should not be taken during pregnancy. 
Fluoroquinolones are bactericidal antibiotics that inhibit DNA gyrase. It's typically used in the treatment of gram-negative rods in urinary and GI tract infections, as well as Neisseria and some gram-positive organisms. Common reactions include GI upset, skin rashes, headache, and dizziness. Animal studies have shown damage to cartilage, which is why these drugs are contraindicated in pregnancy and childhood. Metronidazole is a bacterial antibiotic that induces free radical toxic metabolites, damaging bacterial DNA. It also has antiprotozoal activity. Metronidazole is used to treat infections from Giardia, Entamoeba, Trichomonas, Garnerella vaginalis, and anaerobes. Also important is the treatment of H. pylori. Remember the git gap on the metro mnemonic. Metronidazole may induce a disulfiram-like reaction which is nausea that occurs with concurrent alcohol use. Organisms targeted by antimicrobacterial drugs are M. tuberculosis, M. avium intracellulare, and M. leprae. There is no prophylaxis for M. leprae. Isoniazid, aka INH, is used for both prophylaxis and treatment against M. tuberculosis, the causative agent in tuberculosis. The mnemonic RIPE is useful in remembering the drugs used for treatment against tuberculosis. It includes rifampin, isoniazid, pyrazinamide, and ethambutol. Azithromycin is used for both prophylaxis and treatment for M. avium intracellulare, which is of particular importance in immunocompromised patients. Rifampin and ethambutol and streptomycin are other treatment agents. These important medications will be discussed in more detail later. Finally, dapsone, rifampin, and clofazamine are all used for treatment for M. leprae, which causes leprosy. INH works within the cell wall of M. tuberculosis to inhibit the synthesis of mycolic acids. These mycolic acids are part of the cell wall of M. tuberculosis. It is actually the metabolite of INH that is active against M. tuberculosis. Therefore, INH requires catalase peroxidase for conversion to this active molecule. INH has a number of clinically important side effects, including neurotoxicity, hepatotoxicity, and lupus, which can be prevented by the co-administration of pyridoxine, which is vitamin B6. The important toxicities of INH can be remembered with a mnemonic. INH injures neurons and hepatocytes. Rifampin works within the cytoplasm of M. tuberculosis to inhibit DNA-dependent RNA polymerase. It is clinically used against M. tuberculosis and as an alternative to dapsone against M. leprae. Its classic side effect is red-orange body fluids. Along with rifampin and isoniazide, pyrazinamide is another drug used to treat M. tuberculosis. It works by blocking mycobacterial fatty acid synthesis and is particularly effective in acidic pH of phagolysis where TB is found after being engulfed by macrophages. Its toxicities include hyperuricemia and hepatotoxicity. Ethambutol is the final drug in the four drug therapy, remember the mnemonic RIPE, used to treat M. tuberculosis. It works by blocking the enzyme arabinosyl transferase which ultimately decreases carbohydrate polymerization of the cell wall of M. tuberculosis. Remember the unique toxicity that can be caused by ethambutol, which is optic neuropathy, resulting in red-green color blindness. In certain patient populations, prophylaxis against organisms is warranted. Rifampin and minocycline are used for meningococcal infection prophylaxis. Ceftriaxone is prophylactic against gonorrhea, TMP-SMX is used in patients with recurrent UTIs. Penicillins are still the drug of choice for prophylaxis against endocarditis in minor surgical and dental procedures. Benzathione penicillin G provides prophylaxis against syphilis. As we mentioned before, it's important to remember at what CD4 counts an HIV patient is likely to develop an infection. This table is here to remind you that for HIV patients with CD4 counts less than 200, provide prophylaxis against pneumocystis pneumonia with TMP-SMX. Patients with CD4 counts less than 100 should receive TMP-SMX to cover not only pneumocystis but also toxoplasmosis. 
Finally, patients with CD4 counts less than 50 should already be receiving TMP-SMX to prevent pneumocystis pneumonia and toxoplasmosis, but at this point you should also add azithromycin to cover mycobacterium avium complex. Emergence of bacterial resistance to current antibiotics is a worsening problem in clinical settings. MRSA, or methicillin-resistant staph aureus, is treated with vancomycin. Vancomycin-resistant enterococci, which are a type of group D streptococci, are treated with linezolid and streptogramins, which you will recall both have very broad spectrum coverage. There are different drugs that can be used for empiric treatment of community-acquired pneumonia, depending on which setting you are in. As an outpatient, give macrolid therapy. Inpatient settings require fluoroquinolones, and in the ICU setting, patients should receive a beta-lactam drug in addition to fluoroquinolone or azithromycin.